Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at some of the common issues that you can encounter when working with Git and how to fix those issues. We looked at the detached head state, how to fix accidental git reset hyphen hyphen hard, how to troubleshoot push and pull errors, and also how to fix git authentication errors. In today's session, we are going to talk about GitHub organizations and teams. When you're working alone on a project, your personal GitHub account is all you need. Like in our case here, this is my personal GitHub account and this is fine if you're working alone. But what happens when your project grows to include multiple developers? So let's say you have a front-end team, a back-end team, a DevOps team and a dozen different repositories. Managing all of that from personal account becomes a nightmare. That's where GitHub organizations and teams come in. In this session, I will cover how to use these powerful features to structure your projects, manage permissions, and also collaborate efficiently at scale. Now, before we dive into the details, if you find this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. First, let's talk about the basics of GitHub organizations. A uh, GitHub organization is a shared account that can own multiple repositories and this is managed by multiple people. Unlike your personal account where only you are managing this, an organization can be managed by multiple people. Think of it as a corporate or team account for your projects. Now the key difference from a personal account is that with an organization you get a centralized ownership. So the repositories will belong to an organization and not to an individual. So let's say if a developer leaves the team, their access is revoked, but the repositories still remains. Unlike your personal account where if you leave GitHub, your repositories are deleted. With an organization, the projects, the repositories would still be there. And then you get a structured collaboration. So organizations provide a framework for creating teams and then you can also assign permissions which is very crucial when you have a larger group of people. So you can create a new organization from the GitHub dashboard and then you can add members to it. This provides a single source of truth for all of your collaborative projects. Now let's look at how we can create organizations and then how we can manage teams. So to create your GitHub organizations, click on your profile picture here in the top right corner and then select organizations and you begin by creating a new organization. So click on this new organization and then um, uh, you will need to choose the plan. So generally, if, if you are at an organization level, you will have a, uh, a paid account, which is your GitHub enterprise. But in our case, since it's, 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 it's free, we will go with this particular option where we will create a free organization and then you will need to basically fill in the details so give it a name so let's call this as dj uploads one two three and then the uh, contact email um, and then this organization belongs so like let's say this is my personal account or if it's a business so at an organization level this will be a business and then we will need to verify the account so we will need to solve this puzzle so let's quickly solve that submit and uh, accept the uh, terms and conditions uh, okay looks like that too. okay so that's the second one so let me submit that and this is done so accept the terms and conditions next so next it will ask us to add users we will do this separately for now we will skip this uh, step and now we have created our organization so this is the organization name and under this i can start creating repositories i can add i can create teams i can add people so if i go back to the dashboard i should be able to see two things so this is my personal uh, uh, account and this is my organization so generally at an organization level at a company level you will be using organizations so let's go to this view organization now the second step would be to the uh, would be to add members so you know if you have people in your team you will need to invite them so for this we will go to the people tab over here so at this point i have since i am the owner i will have access so you can invite member and you can start filling in the details you can either uh, give the username or the email address of the respective uh, team members 
So let's say in my case, I have this another account. So let me use that and then invite. Uh, so now we will um, give the code. So let me quickly give the code over here. So 294758 verify. And um, you can assign the role to the user. So you want it the user to be a member or an owner. For now, we will set it as a member and then send invitation. And this will send out an email notification to the user and the user will need to accept the invitation. So here, this is the invitation the uh, other person will see. So they just have to join um, the organization. So you can see join and done. So now uh, you can see there are two people who are part of this organization. Likewise, so let me refresh this and uh, you can see there is no matching invitations and members so there are currently two members so likewise you can add more uh, people to your organization and uh, you know you can start managing the access as well now let's see how you can create your team so generally the organizations is mainly used when you have different different teams like a front-end team back-end team devops team and then so on so let's look at how you can create your team so you can head over to your teams tab over here so let's say new team give it a name so let's call this as uh, devops give your description uh, and then visibility will be uh, visible and then we will create this team so by default i will be part of the team so likewise if you want to add uh, uh, more teams you can always add more teams over here but for now we'll just keep it to uh, this team and now how do you add more people so just click on add a member choose the name so let's say the user that we have um there's my user okay there it is invite and done so you can see now both these users are part of my devops team so far we have looked at how you can create your organization how you can add uh, members your organizations and how you can create your teams as well now let's look at how you can create your repositories and then you can give permissions to your respective team to certain repositories so here we'll head over to the repositories and we'll create a new repository and uh, let's call this as uh, demo one and uh, you can see this is public or private you can choose uh, add a readme you can give a description so try to give valid information as much as possible and we'll create this repository so now our repository is created now how do you give access to this repository so you can go to settings you can go to collaborators and uh, teams and here you can see so you can either add individual people or you can add your team as well so let's go ahead and add the team so this is the only team i have so we will select that team and then the permission the role so we'll talk about this role in some time but for now let's say uh, we'll give the maintain role and then add selection and now my devops team will have access to this particular repository likewise i can create multiple repositories and then i can give access to only certain teams so that i can manage their access as well so that's basically about your organizations how you can uh, create teams how you can invite people how you can create repositories and then how you can give access to uh, certain teams to certain repositories now let's talk about the roles and permissions so within a github organization there are different roles that define what a person can do so you have the owner and then you have your member so if you remember here when we invited uh, people so invite member so let's give another name just for the sake of um, uh, example so let's say uh, this user so invite and here you can see so you have role member and owner so owner basically means that owner so this particular role indicates that you are giving full administrative control over the organization including billing security settings and member management whereas the member role is a standard user with access to the organization's repositories and teams only so uh, it's more like a read access you're giving access to certain repositories and to certain teams but you're not giving other access so if you need the other access then you will be going with the owner now in addition to this top level roles you can also assign different permission levels to a team for each repository so here if you remember when uh, i went to the repository um, so this particular repository and then uh, settings 
collaborators and then here when I came to the add so let me delete this for now so that we can do this once again so let's say add teams and then the team so here you see this is the additional level of permissions we have so uh, you should only grant the minimum permissions required for a user or the team to do their job so these are your standard repository permission levels so you have the read so uh, with this role you can only view and clone the repository this is for users who only need to consume the code then you have triage so with this role you can manage issues uh, pull requests but you cannot write to the repository this is great for project managers then you have write role so with this you can push to the repository and manage branches and this is the standard role for most of the developers then you have the maintain role so with this you can manage repository settings and collaborate but you cannot manage security settings or delete the repository and then finally have the admin role so with this you get full control over the repository so basically you can do whatever you want including the destructive actions so please be very careful with this so you just select the role so let's say maintain add selection and then done so by creating a team and assigning it the right permission on a specific repository you have created a clean maintainable structure that's easy to audit and manage at scale in conclusion github organizations provide the structure teams provides the organization and granular permissions ensure that your collaborative development environment is both efficient and secure and that brings us to the end of the session if you found this content helpful please hit that like button subscribe to the channel for more content and let me know in the comment section if you have any queries thank you for watching and i will see you in the next session